Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about investigations which are done generally in incompetent squint. So incompetent squint are also called as your paralytic squint. So there are few investigations which are commonly done in a case of incompetent squint. Let's see what are these investigations, how to do it and how do we interpret them. So starting with the investigation you always start with a detailed uh, workup about your history. So you ask about the subjective symptoms to the patient which are your diplopia, confusion and asthenopia. So in diplopia you exactly ask about when was the onset, is it constant or intermittent and at which distance or at which gaze do the patient find it having more amount of diplopia when compared to the other. Is it having the same amount of diplopia in all direction or is it differing in different directions? Next is you when you ask the patient for confusion. So it occurs uh, basically due to your diplopia only. So again the patient if he says that a particular gaze he is feeling more confused compared to the other that could give you a f idea that exactly which muscle or which direction he is having more problem. And finally because of these there would be your asthenopic symptoms that is eye, tr eye strain which is because of the difficulty in focusing. So these are your subjective uh, symptoms or things which you need to take uh, account for and when we come on to the objective uh, history we need to see about the uh, deviation, we need to see about abnormal head posture, ptosis or if exophthalmos is if, if there is anything such which is present. Also we need to see the uh, any previous ocular problem or treatment which was taken like for example was there uh, any retinal surgery done or either any surgery which after which there was uh, the this deviation happened or was there any general health debility or did he had any severe infection or did he uh, had any viral infections which lead to this thing or was there any family history of any such condition so these are the things which are to be taken into consideration also in inspection what we see is about your facial asymmetry if it is present also ask if there was any road traffic accident or anything after which this kind of uh, manifestation led. So starting from the first test which is commonly done in each and every clinic let it be a uh, squint clinic or even a normal clinic. So cover test is the first thing which we already do. So in cover test what we look for we actually see if there is presence of any manifest or a latent deviation. What is the type of deviation and we look for the comitance that is your primary versus the secondary deviation and which eye is the normal fixing eye. So generally we find out which is the non-affected and which is the affected eye. So what you do is you generally do a cover test which could be your all the three tests that is your direct cover test, cover uncover test and alternate cover test. So in that you can find out the type of deviation also the presence if it is a manifest or a latent generally in incompetent squint you will find it as a manifest squint and uh, your inconcomitant again you will see that when you occlude the affected eye the amount of deviation that is primary deviation is less when compared to the secondary deviation and this is how you do your cover test also what you can see in this that when primary deviation is taken when you cover the affected eye because of the Herring's law the amount of deviation is less but as you cover the affected eye uh, and the other eye wants to move in the direction of your affected side more amount of innervation is required leading to an increased deviation in the other eye so that is your primary and secondary deviation. Coming on to ocular movements so ocular movements will give you the idea which side the affected muscle is so if it is a lateral rectus palsy of the right eye the patient will uh, be unable to move the right eye into that particular gaze of direction and you will see more amount of deviation if it is uh, a superior rectus palsy the patient will not able to take the eye in the upward direction if it is an inferior rectus palsy the patient will not able to depress the eye and so on so this is generally inversion movements you see which uh, gaze the affected uh, muscles are so that is how you do your version.
next is measurement of deviation which is most important you need to find out what is the amount of deviation if you are planning for any surgical treatment so that is can be done with the help of three simple things either you can use a synaptophore either you can use a prism and cover test or either you can use a torsional deviation measuring tools which are computerized as well so synaptophore gives you all the three uh, axis of deviation that is horizontal vertical and torsional as well so what happens that you can find out the horizontal deviation into this particular scale which is the horizontal scale you can find out the vertical deviation on this particular scale and the torsional deviation on this scale so what you ask is you ask the patient to look through this two high piece with both the eyes with the refractive correction placed here and uh, then you place your uh, smp slides okay smp or even the fusion slide and you ask the patient if he sees two image or one single image and then you uh, ask the patient to move this handle into a particular direction until unless that becomes single also what you can do is you can move this uh, particular eyepiece vertically and torsionally with the help of bars present here uh, with the help of knobs present here and you can exactly align both the images and find the amount of deviation with the help of different scale present onto it next is having your prism bar and cover test so what you do is you place the prism bar with base opposite to the deviation and perform a cover and cover test until and unless there is uh, no more movement of the eye seen under cover so this is what happens you can find out the amount of deviation but here it is a more tricky procedure because every time if it is only possible to do uh, when there is only one muscle is affected if more than one muscle is affected then pro problem would be that at a time you can find it only in one particular gaze or rather what we say either you can find the horizontal or the vertical and finally there is your torsional deviation which can be found out with multiple softwares also so this is a kind of software in which what happens you ask the patient to wear the red green glasses and see right in front of it and then the computer will project two different line that is a red line and a green line and then you ask the patient to align both the lines on one over the other so if there is any torsional deviation present basically which is your extortion in this given diagram so what will happen because of the extortion uh, because of the anaglyph the green uh, glasses will show him the red line and the red glasses will show him the green line so he will say that he can see the uh, image base a bit uh, extorted or entorted and then you ask the patient to align and as he moves the line into such direction the computer will calculate the amount of torsional deviation coming on to the next test which is very commonly performed which is called as the diplopia test so here what you do is you ask the patient to sit at a distance of 1 meter from a particular wall or a chart you take your retinoscope and you project a light in front of the patient with the patient wearing an anaglyph so he will be telling you that he sees an image which is red green or com combination of both wherever there will be a diplopic image so he will say there is one red image and one green image so in diplopia test what we do is we show the patient with nine different gazes and see in which uh, gaze there is a maximum suppression so that we can identify which muscle is paralyzed so in this case if you see uh, the patient when he looks on the left side there is no diplopia but as the patient looks on to the right side he has more suppression of image so also if you see this patient uh, the left eye is having the green and the right eye is having the red so this is also an uh, uncrossed uh, what we say diplopia so that means uh, in uncrossed uh, the patient is having your esotropia so this is a patient with your right lateral rectus palsy so the moment the patient looks on to the right side there is more amount of diplopia but as he looks on to the left hand side he has a lesser amount of diplopia belchowski's three step test is one of the most important test in terms of identifying the muscle which is paralyzed in your vertical muscle so basically it is a, a test which identifies that among eight muscle 
which one is responsible for the hypertropia or hypotropia so this is one of the easiest way of finding it in just three steps uh, as a matter of fact Belchowski's three step test gives you a very quick uh, identification that is it the inferior oblique superior oblique superior rectus or the inferior rectus of which eye the right eye or the left eye which is affecting or leading to the uh, squint to be incompetent so how you perform it first of all you find out the amount of uh, hypertropia uh, is in which eye so let's see in this case what has happened the amount of hypertropia is more in the right eye the right eye is into a state of hypertropia so that could be because either paralysis of your superior oblique or inferior rectus of same eye or the paralysis of the inferior oblique and superior rectus of the other eye so this is how you find out for the first step so hypertropia of right eye means either there will be paralysis of the depressor muscles in this eye or either it could be your paralysis of the elevator muscles in the other eye okay so because of that you find four muscles second step is you ask the patient to look in the right or what we say the dextro and levo version so when the patient looks into dextro and levo so you will see in which direction the patient has more amount of your hypertropia so if you see when the patient looks on to the uh, right hand side the hypertropia is almost gone but the moment the patient will look on to the left hand side the hypertropia has increased in this eye so the simple term which you used when you see left side your left sided muscle will be having a paralysis because of which the eye is going into a state of hyperdeviation so either it could be the right eye's inferior or superior oblique or either it could be the left eye's superior rectus or inferior rectus so what you do is you mark this muscles and finally the third step of park 3 step is you do an intorsion and extorsion so of the uh, your head will be tilted into the right side or left side so you ask the patient to tilt the head on right side and see if the deviation increases or decreases and you do the same when the patient tilts the head onto the other side so if you see when the patient is tilting the head on the right side the amount of deviation increases but the moment he tilts on to the left side it decreases so that means the uh, affected muscles are the muscles which are acting onto the right tilt so simply uh, rather not knowing which muscles are going into you make a right tilted line into these diagram so right tilted means the superior rectus and superior oblique of this and inferior oblique and inferior rectus of the other eye so these are the muscles which are responsible so once we are done with all this three step you need to find out which is the muscle which is being encircled three times so in the left eye if I see there is no muscle which is encircled three times the IO is two times SR is two times and IR is also two time but into the right eye if you see the SR is only circled one time IO has circled only one time IR has only one time and three times there has been a circle onto the superior oblique that is one two and three so this suggests that the superior oblique muscle of the right eye is paralyzed leading to the hypertropia of right eye so because the right eye superior oblique which is a depressor muscle it is paralyzed the eye is going into an hypertropia state taking one more example let's see so this is a simpler uh, example you can understand so this is a diagram which is showing that this is the nose this is the right eye this is the left eye so we all know whenever we adduct it is our oblique muscles which are elevating and depressing and whenever we abduct it is our rectus muscle which are helping in adduction your elevation and depression so this is how you make the diagram the IO is up because it is an elevator muscle inferior oblique is an elevator superior oblique is a depressor whereas superior rectus is an elevator and so inferior rectus is a depressor similarly you make for right and left eye so let's take an example here we ask the patient to look in the primary gaze and see which eye is having hypertropia so if you can find it here the left eye is having the hypertropia so when we say the term left eye hypertropia that could be either because of your 
left eye having the depressor muscles which are paralyzed so either the depressors are not working here leading to an overaction of your uh, elevator muscles so the left superior oblique or left inferior rectus these two can be paralyzed or the right eye superior rectus and inferior oblique are paralyzed because of which this is overacting so that is how you do the first step second step is you ask the patient to look into the right and left gaze so here if you see the patient uh, is looking into the right gaze there is an increase in hypertropia but when he looks into the left gaze there is no hypertropia present so when he looks into the right gaze the right gaze is the muscles which are this and this one so it is either the right superior rectus or right inferior rectus or either it is the left inferior oblique or left superior oblique you simply do is right sided whichever muscles are you just make a circle over them this is the second step and finally the third step which is your right head tilt and left head tilt so if you see when the patient is doing a right head tilt there is almost no hypertropia but the moment you ask the patient to do a left head tilt the patient has a hypertropia so now the patient when he is doing the left head tilt the muscles which will be affected are the intortor and extortor so this muscle it has to this eye has to go into an intortion this has to go into an extortion so that could be either because of this rio or ria that is your right inferior oblique or right inferior rectus or either your left superior oblique or left superior rectus the simpler way to understand is if the patient is having a left tilt and more amount of tropia so you make the line also left tilted it is tilted onto the left hand side or if the patient is having a right tilt so you make a right tilted line okay so this is how you do the three step test so after that you will look for a muscle which is having three circles so in this eye if you see all the muscles are having two circles only there is no muscle with three circles whereas in the left eye 1 2 and 3 these muscles are having only one circle whereas your left superior oblique is the only muscle which is having all the three circles so we can conclude that in this patient there is a left superior oblique palsy leading to the hypertropia of left eye this is a algorithm which simply uh, need not to do all those diagram and everything so let's say if there is a right hypertropia with uh, which increases on left gaze and increases on left tail that means that the left superior rectus is the one which is having a problem and if you see again the patient which we had earlier he had a left hypertropia uh, which increased in your right gaze and which increased it left tilt so that means left superior oblique so this is a very short algorithm which anyone can have and just perform the uh, three step test and just see so let's say the patient had a right hypertropia which increased on left gaze when the patient looks on left side he has more deviation so that means left gaze and when you ask the patient to tilt he has a right tilt which shows more amount of deviation so that means that the patient has a right superior oblique palsy so this is how very simply you can find out which muscle is actually paralyzed the final measurement uh, of the deviation you can do is with the help of a, a quantitative measurement with his screen so let's say i understood that there is a superior oblique palsy but for how much degree is it paralysis or is it a complete paralysis so i can do it with the help of his screen so his screen is basically you ask the patient to wear an anaglyph and then you project a particular color and ask the patient to show where exactly he sees that color so that will be based on the diplopia how much he has and you can plot a particular chart which will show you the amount of overaction or underaction one particular muscle is doing his chart can be done both with a manual or a computerized way so now computerized way are more efficient because in that what happens uh, the patient needs to just uh, use the keyboard to match one stimulus over the other and once that is done and the patient puts an enter the computer algorithm calculates each and everything that what amount of deviation in present and what gaze so there is a complete report which is generated which gives you that in which quadrant how much amount of uh, deviation is present and which muscle is overacting so with this we end with the different investigations which are done in your incompetent squint 
I hope you understood and it will help you to understand the investigations of incompetent squint. Please do subscribe our channel for more videos on binocular vision and squint and different topics of optometry. Thank you and goodbye.